Hey folks, it's your boy D here with the Geek Experience, and we're going to talk about the third episode of Game of Thrones Season 8, The Long Night. And I have to admit, it was an excellent episode, so sit back, enjoy what you have to hear, and if you really liked it, hit that like button. If you want to hear more, hit that subscribe button, help us out and get to 200 subscribers. So anyway, let's get going. This episode... Once again, the first two episodes have been excellent, building up to the battle with the Night King, and this episode paid off in spades. The thing I liked about it was it started off with the tension. Uh, we knew last episode that they, uh, the Night Walkers were coming, and so this episode, everybody's preparing, setting up. They're getting all their, you know, soldiers out in the field, and you know, you just feel the tension that everybody's nervous. You know, they know this is a huge battle. They're not sure if they're going to survive the night. Just And everybody's getting into place. And then, lo and behold, as they're waiting, you know, for, you know, the whites and white walkers to come, all of a sudden, Melisandre pops up. And that was a question I actually had from last week. Like, where is she? Because we knew she was going to die at Winterfell. She said that uh, last season. She just pops up out of nowhere. And instantly, you know, she goes up to the Dothraki and she sets all their blades on fire. And you're like, oh, man, you know, we have a chance here. You know, you, you get that little sense, a little bright sense of hope, um, you know, that something, you know, things are going to go their way. And what was really cool is you see, you know, them running out and you see all these thousand points of light. Very cool scene. Very well put together. And you see them, you know, attack. And then you just slowly see the light start to dim and go out. And you just get a sense of dread because the Dothraki basically are they're, they're all gone and and you know and and with them you see you know Jorah Mormont and you, you almost get that feeling man you know something happens to him <clears throat> then all of a sudden you know you see this huge wave of you know for lack of a better term the undead zombies you know attacking and it's just a huge huge battle and it just goes ape shit from there and I have to say it was very very well done um props out to Everybody and all the different characters, you know, you had Jon Snow and Daenerys on the dragons, you know, flying around. Very cool. It was kind of hard to see, you know, what was going on, especially, you know, now that the, you know, the winter had come in and was blowing everything. But at the same time, the, the way they were editing, it was very hard to, to see what was going on. I think that's what they were trying to go for. Um, very tension filled as they were, you know, trying to, you know, light the uh, trenches and everything. Uh, what I really enjoyed about the episode was how... You know, once the walkers, and if you haven't noticed, this is going to be a spoiler-filled review. You know, once the walkers, you know, get past... I mean, they're actually using tactics here. They're not just mindless undead. The Night King actually has, you know, thought and strategy here. And I really, really enjoyed that. And he's doing all this without talking, uh, which was really cool. But then as the White Walkers, you know, begin to overwhelm Winterfell, uh, we just start to see just, you know, how slowly how they're starting to get in and how everybody's starting to react and i ha i have to give it out give it up to liana mormont um you know she, she was a, she was a casualty but she went out like a boss she took out an undead giant okay the little girl who's all of 10 12 years old she she fights it was kind of cheesy when she did her little you know super scream or whatever but, you know, when the giant picked her up, you know, she did her thing, took out the giant, and, you know, paid the ultimate price. Hats off to you, Liana. You never smiled, or maybe you did once, but you went out like the leader you were. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we saw one of the guys from the Night's Watch get taken out. And, you know, of course, you know, you're, you're seeing everybody getting overwhelmed. You start to see, you know, the dragons, you know, start to falter. Dan, uh, you know, Danny gets overwhelmed and everything. But what the thing, you know, the two things that really, that I really uh, was wondering how this was going to work was obviously we had people in the crypts, and the, you know, a lot of people theorized that's probably the last place you want to be when there's undead. And the other thing is we've seen, you know, at the Battle of uh, was it Hard's Home a couple seasons ago, that once the people die, the Night King is going to bring them back up. So he even has even more people. And we, when we saw that, and that turned into the huge amount of panic, uh, especially for John as he was trying to reach the Night King. And I, I have to call out one thing, you know, he was being surrounded by a lot of them. How he survived, 
That was a little bit of a leap of logic there, but, you know, I'll give it what it is. <clears throat> but even cooler is, you know, you know when Danny uh, got thrown out from her dragon and she's all there by herself, and you think she's going to be, you know, overwhelmed, who comes to her side once again? Another Mormont, Jorah Mormont, the guy who's been by her side since the very beginning, since season one. He comes to her side once again, the man with undying love for Daenerys, you know, and never will get that love in return. He goes out and he defends her uh, till his last last breath. And I have to, once again, hats off to the Mormonts. They serve their uh, queen well. They serve their king well. They serve their people well. Then, of course... One of the coolest, most tense-filled scenes for me was Arya. Looks like she was in the library all by herself, uh, trying to avoid uh, the undead. And I, I have to admit, I'm not one for jump scares. I'm not one for tension-filled moments. So I kind of had, like, one eye open. I was all squeamish, you know, <laughs> trying to trying to watch that scene because I was really, really, it was really quiet, really intense. And, you know, she's trying to avoid being caught. And uh, sure enough, you know, that that was a very well-intense scene. And then, you know, it was very claustrophobic, uh, you know, in those halls of Winterfell. You see her running. And, and that really got me. Then, of course, uh, you know, once again, you know, we end up at the garden. We have Bran out there, you know, trying to, you know, lure the bee bait. And we have Theon. And, you know, if, if you didn't predict it before, uh, I kind of, you know, we all kind of saw this coming. Uh, Theon was, was going to take his last stand, you know, his story had come, kind of gone full circle, and, you know, Theon made his charge towards the Night King, and he did not make it, but hats off to you, Theon, uh, you, you got your level of redemption, and even Bran thanked you for the service you did, so, once again, hats off to you, and then, at, you know, we get to the point where the Night King's about to, uh, strike down, uh, Bran, and it's obvious Jon Snow's trying to get to the garden, but he just can't get there because of uh, the Night King's dragon is, is blocking his way. So what's going to happen here? And what happens? Arya Stark, the little girl from season one who learned how to avoid death, comes to the rescue and takes out the Night King. Now, I have to, I have to say, the way they, they showed her taking him out, Kind of came off a little anticlimactic, but it was really, really, really cool. And so, therefore, the Night King is over, and the battle is won. We also lost another guy. We lost Beric, uh, the guy with the flaming sword, the guy who was resurrected uh, multiple times. I think 19 times or whatever. He, he's alive. I mean, he died. Uh, he served as well. And then, of course, at the end... Melisandre, her prediction came through, and she passed away at the end. And that was a very somber moment. But all in all, an excellent episode. Very well done. Now we have three episodes left where they need to go down and deal with Cersei. I thought it was an episode A++++. Continue adding pluses. 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, however you want to look at it. But I want to know your thoughts. What did you think of the third episode, The Long Night of game of thrones did you love it did you hate it let me know post it in the comments below and until next time peace